Yeah, okay, it's T with Gary V. Sipping in for three. I know patience is the key. Putting out all of my shit for free. This is T with Gary V. Might go make a flip. Take a risk. Good morning. It is T with Gary V on this uh, April 30th. Uh, in 2020, right? 20. Tomorrow is the first day of May. And so this is the last day of April. And so let's get right into the show. What is up, Gary? How are you doing? I'm well, Spencer. How are you? I'm doing well, dude. It feels great to be here, man. It feels great to finally get to talk to you. Although it's not face-to-face, we are social distancing meeting right now. I wish I was in New York in town uh, having to talk with you. Um, man, it, it feels great to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get into it, uh, give a little bit of context uh, to everyone that's listening right now. Uh, I am a beatboxer, so I make music out of my face. Um, and yeah, I'm living my dreams in Hollywood right now. I uh, have followed your advice for the past four years. So this is really, really crazy that we're here right Thank now. Thank you, Spencer. And Congrats on all your success. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you so much for sending me that DM the other day and saying congrats on everything that's happening with me. It really, really means a lot to me, especially coming from you. Um, I was homeless last year, my guy. I was homeless last year and I was figuring a way to, to piece things together. I was looking myself in the mirror and I'm like, hey, look, if you really, really want this, you want to be the guy for this, you got to put in the work. And I watched you religiously. I did. I watched you religiously and I was fighting adversity and I got early onto TikTok really, really early on to TikTok. And I just played the game. I put a beat out every single day and that's my song. Those were my mixtapes. And I put it out every single day. And I'm like in 365 days, if this doesn't work, shit, man, maybe something else is happening. But uh, right now I'm sitting at the top 10 um, within the platform, which is insane. Cause I went from not really having a home and being in a windowless room to uh, having an audience, having attention, having uh, people around me that really, really care about me. I'm getting ad deals. I'm talking to agencies right now. I'm looking to uh, release a song within the next a uh, little bit more than a month, but we're planning it out right now. I mean, it's really, really exciting. So uh, my question is for people that are in my position. You talk a lot about getting to this certain place, you know, finding your group of people, uh, finding your audience. Um, and right now, people are gravitating uh, towards me uh, to build a bigger vision, something more sustainable, which I really want to do. I want to bring back to everyone that's given to me. So, um, yeah, uh, in hopes of forming a team, I noticed that's what you have uh, built so strongly. Who are people in a modern and perhaps future uh, business? Who are some key players? Who are people that you can't live without? I, I, you know, I think the couple things. One, in the same way that you kind of took a step back and said, "Let me be patient but thoughtful," and and you took advantage of the new attention on a platform and it's put you on this path. I think the first person you should start with is a right hand person, just an admin, you know, assistant, like just a like a a confidant, somebody you can trust. You know, that, that would be my starting point. And, and, and then really you start building around you. The people I can't live without might be different than who you can't live without. Meaning, you know, for, for example, you know, I, I, de- I despise logistics. I, I need an admin to make sure I know where I'm going or things of that nature. So I, I think you're going to need to figure out who, what you need. Some people need a PR person around them to get attention. I did not. Some people need a salesperson around them. I do not. You know, so you really need to think about who you need around you for you. Less about me, it's about you being self-aware. But I think given your circumstance, especially going from homeless to this, the extremes of one year, what I want to do is make sure you really you know, gather your thoughts of the last four years of the stuff you've heard from me, which is look for a kind, good person that can really bring you value and 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 compliments the things that you don't want to be doing. I I 100% agree with what you're saying. Like you say, double down on your strengths and for the weaknesses, you know, build on them, but know that other people can do them better um, and have them help you. So right now, uh, that's a really, really big thing. Uh, I have a very Just, small- you, 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 need to, you need to slow it down even more than you think right now, even though it seems like the time mm-hmm. to, you need to slow it down in your mind and press hard in your actions. 
So you need to be making mm-hmm. more content right now. You need to do how, how you know when I DM'd you. I'm trying to remember now. How big is your audience on Instagram? Instagram is not nearly as big as TikTok. Yeah, I remember so how much? It's at like 750k, a little bit above that right now. I would probably if I if I were yeah I know if I were you I would probably make a single piece of TikTok content a day that was moving the audience to YouTube and Instagram and Twitter. I would do that every day, once a day. Wow. Like okay. Today today's like, like a today's like a Twitter reply day. Everyone like boom boom boom. You do your beatboxing and you're like yo first 500 people that reply on Twitter I'm gonna reply to. Boom. Give back. I like that. Yeah. Wow. They get pumped because your audience loves you. You got 40 million in that youth world, but now you're mm-hmm. building. I want you to diversify out of TikTok. I w- so I yes. want your actions to be more hardcore, but in your brain, I don't want you buying things. I don't want you over hiring things. You know, I don't want you. You know, I don't want you to think like your agent, who you're, whoever your manager is going to be, is going to like completely put. You know, like you need to be smart. I've listened to you so far. I haven't. Um, I haven't monetized my audience. At all, but we're thinking about coming out with merch uh, in the next month when which, we're which could work, movie. which could work. There's a million ways to do it, but like punchline being slow it down. Yes, be more thoughtful, be more focused, stay hungry, be grateful. <sighs> Send right, Spencer, talk to you soon, my guy. Thank you. Bless. You got it, brother. Take care. Great kid. He's doing a really good job. Crushing TikTok. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm well, Chris. How are you? Good. I'll just get right into it. So a little bit of background context. At 15, I bought my, I, I'm a Chicagoland DJ. Um, at 15, I bought my own mixer. I took all the money in my bank account. I spent it on one mixer and for six months straight. I locked myself in a room and six hours a day, I just taught myself how to mix. And I did that for six months before I went on a carnival cruise and I met the onboard DJ there. And he actually saw you know, what I taught myself. Then he actually, uh, him and I exchanged contact info. He is now my mentor and I have a internship set up, you know, in the future after I graduate high school. And so after I came back, um, I joined a family business um, for DJing and I have an Instagram and every single week I force myself to release a new mix every Monday. And um, I release two other posts um, during the week. So okay. I'm, I'm active on it. Um, ish. And then active-ish, yeah. Ish. I don't three, wanna... three posts a week, I think, is quite low. Okay. I just don't, like, I want to, I only have, you know, 65 followers on there. And so? I, I guess, I guess I just don't want to, like, flood how many posts are coming out. You're definitely not flooding them. So I just wanted to know, you know, what more can I do? How do I expand my growth? How do I like? By posting more. Yeah. How, like, how am I going to, I don't know. How am I going to like get more followers? How am I, how am I going to like, I guess, get a following and get to where I want to be? People get very confused and get tactical instead of looking at things in the macro. How does... How did Martin Luther King get more influence and get a movement by him? He spoke in more churches. Okay. So how did I mean, Michael Jackson and Prince and Madonna become the you know the dominating music forces of the 80s? Their fucking videos played 24/7 on MTV. Brother, I'd rather you have the 60, you're playing defense. You're like, oh, I'm going to flood the 65 and it's going to go to 42 without realizing if you post three times a day, that 65 is going to go to 650. Okay. Everybody, everybody worries about what's going to go wrong instead of focusing on what's going to go right. You're in a defensive mindset. So, okay. Um, I haven't gone to TikTok for DJ. Real, just real, I... real quick, I apologize because Claude Diamond in the comments brings up the question that people struggle with when I say this. Is the equality or quantity? Quality is subjective. Mm-hmm. Whether I like your fucking beats or not is my subjective call. There's people that think, you know, some of the greatest artists of all time are overrated or underrated. You know what I mean? That's com- quality is subjective. 
Mm-hmm. Quantity is not. It's fucking math. Okay. So essentially, the more that I put out, the higher chance the, of people seeing it. Just think about that sentence and just break it down with me. Like, like you know, it's funny because I get it. I actually have a lot of empathy where your mindset is, which where most people are. Of course, by nature of what you just said, like three posts a day on Instagram, three posts a day on TikTok, 12, 15 posts on Twitter, you know, one YouTube video a day. Yes, by, by, that's exactly right. I can't control your quality. I don't, I can't control if you're Timbaland or if you're, or if you're not, I can't control that. But I can tell you right now, the more somebody posts, the more they're fo- forced to create and ideate, the more it expands their ability to be creative and it gives them more opportunities to get uh, you know, awareness and opportunity. 99% of people that are out there and 98% of people that follow me go the other way you know, hide behind perfection or other, you know, facades to not put out more because of insecurities or laziness or lack of drive or lack of conviction or many other variables, thus giving them almost no chance of success. So what, if I were to migrate to TikTok, which honestly- It's not, here, it's not migrating, it's adding. Okay, so it, you like- know, I want you I, talking everywhere. Just because Martin Luther King gave a talk in a small church in Memphis didn't mean that he couldn't go then give a big talk in a uh, you know in a big hall in D.C. Mm-hmm. The answer is always more. And you're so, trying to you're trying to amass attention to give you opportunity to do something you love. So okay. by, na- by 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 even common sense that needs more reps. So. You know, I was thinking, you know, what do I post on TikTok? Do I just follow trends? Because it's it's a weird gray area that I'm in. Ready for this? Both. Make one trend, make a talking video, you know, make another, tr- you know, uh, then a third trend comes. You're like, wait a minute, I can creatively mix that into what I do well. Mm-hmm. The answer is yes. Okay. Like, Literally, this is like a zen, like my concept of communication is almost zen-like. It's like, yes, more, yes, yes. Everyone's asking these questions and I'm like, the fuck are we asking these questions for? Do you want to follow a trend? Yes. Do you want to dance? Sure. I I haven't made a dancing video because I can't fucking do the pop lock shit. Like, you know, (laughs) but like if you can do it, or, you know, I made a wine video. You know, I, I wanted to make a wine, you know, I haven't made a wine video on Musical.ly slash TikTok for four years but I finally feel it's old enough and I felt comfortable enough that I made one of those like a couple of posts ago. Like, yes. There's also going to Twitter. You have a Twitter account or no? Yes. And searching terms in your industry, like literally Twitter search, you know, and you search, you know, ask not generic, but esoteric terms in your business. You know, in mixing culture, you type them in, you see people talking, jump in and reply and go into those conversations. Okay. But do you think the I'm doing the right thing? You know, I'm also with not only with this family business, but I'm also going to other like, I'm looking up like other party groups, I guess, in Chicago, and I'm going to them. I'm, I'm saying, you know, good. if you need a DJ, here I am. I have. Yes, but that's real... sales. That's sales. You're doing a okay. good job with sales. You're not doing a good job with brand. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that that's that's why I think I came on here today just because I literally just need to find a way how to grow that fan base, I guess, how to grow that number. It's tough, it's tough to grow anything if you're not watering it and content is water. Mm-hmm. So, okay. All right. On, you know, on Twitter, then I'll make, you know, text posts saying like, Hey, yep. you know, here's what's coming out. How are you guys doing? Um, this is, you know, I would talk, I would talk more about the overall genre. Nobody cares yet about what you've got coming out. Just like nobody cared that I was, nobody cared like my opinion on wine at first for the first two years. I just talked about wine. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. So I would more or less talk less about you. You're a sales. You're, you're, I like where you're at on sales, but when you make content, you have to bring them value, not make it about what you, you need to make about it or them. So on Twitter, then I would just be like, you know, if the Billboard top 10, you know, look at them and be like, hey, look at this music. 
you know, yes. this is yes. what's happening in the community. Yes. yes. And then I go on to TikTok, you know, uh, duet Charlie D'Amelio if I, for all I care. Yes. Then, you know, that's right. That's right. Then, you're do, you're you know, doing three a day. So if you're going to do at Charlie, or if you're going to just sit there and talk, or if you're going to follow a trend and make one of those, yes. Okay. So. Got it? All right. Thank you. All right. You got it, brother. Talk to you soon. You too. See ya. All right. Looking a little younger this morning. Caught Dustin off guard. Dustin, you didn't see, you know, I had a little fun last night. Before mm -hmm. I fully shaved it off, I did something pretty good. What'd you do? <laughs> 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 you should have kept that. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna get him this morning, but I was like, uh, oh just, man, you should have kept that. That would have been a great <laughs> surprise for everyone watching, just to see that. <laughs> I was thinking about it. All right, let's keep it going. Jeremy, how are you? Hey, how's it going, Gary? Looking good. Uh, dude, this is awesome. Uh, truly an honor and privilege just to to get on. This is really cool. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Um, yeah, so my question revolves around ad spend on social media. Um, okay. I recently published a book back in uh, Janu mid-January uh, is when it went live or for sale on like Amazon and everybody. Um, and this was a book was kind of a story about my experiences as a kid being bullied and what I went through and then kind of evolved into discussing a little bit about how it affected me later on in life and then what my thoughts are on how to fix the epidemic, which is just growing and growing every year. Um, the I'm in probably two thirds of the way done with my second book, uh, which is, you know, going to cover some topics about uh, all of the failures in my life, everything from, you know, it, it, when I started out, I was going to write about all the failures of managers and bosses that I ever worked for and kind of point the finger saying, here's how this guy screwed up. And, you know, I was going to say why that was wrong and here's how they should have acted. And then I, I realized that that was ridiculous of me to try to write something like that. And I actually, after watching a lot of your content, I, I really changed my whole perspective on that. And said, "All right, here's everywhere you, I." Were, Jeremy, on that point, were you yeah. a, were you able to see the attractiveness of accountability? Yes, um, actually, you know what Howdy, it was. was uh, what? I want to say probably, and the, and the second book was the first one I started writing. Um, but as I started to write that book, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm about to explain how all these things failed. Why have I failed at so many different things? And that's when I kind of did a lot of soul searching and went and wrote my first book about my bullying experiences. But it was, I want to say January of last year in 2019, I was, um, I think I was at the gym running on a treadmill or something and, uh, or I was out for a run, I don't know, but I was listening to one of your keynotes in, in my headphones as I'm running. And I want to say it was probably a keynote you did in, Singapore or Philippines, somewhere. I think it was overseas, I believe. And I don't know what the show was or the conference was, but in the middle of it, you're addressing all these entrepreneurs and you were making the point about accountability. And you said, look, everything that happens at VaynerMedia is my fault, yeah. 100%. And I, I, I can't remember. I, I just literally stopped what I was doing and I was like, holy shit. And then I really started listening <laughs> to that. And I was like, Wow, and it, and it just completely opened up everything for me. And you know you what's know. you know what's crazy about it is I actually genuinely mean it. I oh, genuinely I you. like you know yeah, like I, know I really do. I really believe that you know like it's you know my you know it's it's and it's and it's empowering. You know people people love the short term good feeling of blaming someone else, but it leads to very 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 bad long term life. On the flip side, yeah. you know it's not fun to say this is fucked up. Um, because of me, but that's like a short-term pain and long-term it's created incredible serenity and peace and happiness for me. I feel fully in control. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's like, you know, you always used to say that, you know, a lot of your haters say, uh, who cares about Gary? He just says the same thing every time. Well, I don't think that's the point to make the point. The real point is you're consistent in your message. And that's what I loved about it. And, you know, the, I took that to heart and, so the the one I'm writing now is basically, you know, I'm looking at things that I failed or dropped the ball on. And instead of pointing the finger at a boss, 
who may have dropped the ball or treated me terribly, I can at least start to identify here's what I should have did and here's how Correct. I could have won in that situation. Uh, including, um, including some up, you know, you can't control people. And if, if, you know, if you have a terrible boss, like maybe you just need to work somewhere else and that's you taking control of it. Yeah. You know, I, I love your hoodie and I, I love this. I love this country. I was, I was born in the former Soviet Union, but like sometimes when people really get upset with America, I have a lot of empathy because their experience may be difficult, but I always remind them like, you could move to Sweden. You could, Sure. you know, <laughs> it seems extreme. It's like selling your home. You know, I talk, I know you, it sounds like you follow me. Like I talk a lot about selling your home when you can't afford your lifestyle. It seems yeah. like when I started talking about it a year and a half ago, like the entire real estate community got upset with me, this and that. I was like, it's fine. People can be upset with me, but like, you could, yeah, you know, like to me, I don't care about how money compounds or what the value of something is. If one's unhappy, there is no smarts behind it. I don't care that you make a million dollars a year in this business. If it burns you to the ground in your emotions, it was a bad idea. You were better off, you know, doing this other thing for 73,000 a year. I mean, it's not super complicated. Yesterday I was on a Australia, big Australian radio show and they were talking about like, I was talking about my optimism and the DJ was like, man, you're a little too optimistic. He's like, what about all the death? I'm like, what about all the people that's lives have been saved by COVID? Mm -hmm. I mean, does, does the world realize that if COVID started two months earlier, Kobe Bryant would be alive? Yeah. Like, like, you know, like, like, do you know how many people die in traffic accidents every day in America? Do you know how yeah. low that number is right now? Cause nobody's driving crime like, rates down everything. Yeah. Like, you know, like people are, you know, like, yes, there's incredible pain and there's people who've passed specifically because of COVID and they would have lived for another 50 years. And on the flip side, there's people that were, going to die because like and 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 that's where i get into in my mind which is like it's just how you sit and you were seeing it as like it was rick's fault and stan's fault and jay's fault and then boom one fucking sentence and you're like wait a minute and and that accountability leads to control because when you think it's everybody else's fault you feel so sad because you're like fuck they're in control people don't understand control is the happiness control i, I hated my last corporate boss that I had before I left my job. Um, I hated him. He, cause he was a true bully and, and I didn't, I didn't know how to deal with him. And what made it worse was the fact that I looked at this guy as he's affecting my, you know, not only just me, but my family's financial well being. he's affecting whether or not, you know, everything. And I, and I, so my hate for this guy grew more and more. And it's like, I look back on it now. I'm like, I could have handled this guy so much better um, I lost a lot of my focus cause I was just so focused on the fact that he didn't like me and he didn't, you know, it seemed like he wanted to push me out the door. And, you know, I mean, a lot of guys in our team felt that way, but and I think, I think what people don't understand is getting pushed out the door, AKA walking out the door is a powerful move. Yeah. You know, and, and most people feel like that guy won. I don't. Because when everybody walks out the door, that guy gets fired by what's above him. Yeah. People are confused. Every single person here is actually 100% in charge. This is a huge moment. I really appreciate you coming on. You're getting me going here. Like, this oh. is like, I, I'm like really going down a, a path I want to. You're actually 100% in charge. You actually are. What is required to get out of the most difficult situations may feel super uncomfortable or not the ideology of how you saw it. But once you change your ideology and once you stop putting something on a pedestal, a dream, a thought, an idea, and instead just living in the actual moment, you actually realize you're 100% in charge. You can move, yeah. you can, you can, you can get divorced, you can quit a job, you can, you can do anything if you've got humility and confidence. If you have oh, humility oh. and confidence, you can do everything. Mm -hmm. I believe that 100%. That's, I think that's kind of the joy of, being a small business owner too, that, you know, if whatever the, whether it's a pizza shop or a, you know, a media company or whatever it is you have that you're the business owner, it's all on you. You know, you know, you know how many people bought homes, cars, and went on vacations in the last two years that they couldn't afford on paper and uh, small business owners that are now blaming COVID like, Oh, see the world hates me. I'm like, no, the world doesn't hate you. You had bad behavior. The last yeah. four years, you could have been saving money and you could be using that money right now, growing your business, but you took the money out of the business and you bought yeah. a Porsche. 
hundred <laughs> percent. I know. <laughs> but I, I know. You know, it's like the people right now, I, I've put out a couple of comments on Facebook and Twitter here and there about, you know, all right, we're all on quarantine for the last almost two months now. What are we all doing? You know, I, I know most people are sleeping in. Most people are just hanging out and, and that's good to relax a little bit. But I also said, what better time to do something, try something, you know, it's not, I'm not saying everybody just needs to get out and start running 10 miles. It's, you know, is there a hobby you wanted to get into? Is there books you wanted to read things you've that have been stacking up in your life that you haven't been able to do? Well, hello, this is the time. <laughs> I mean, There's so much one. Get, get, somebody hit me up the other day. It's like, Gary, I feel useless. I'm not doing anything. I want to get back. I have no money. I'm like, you could have retweeted the all in challenge. Dustin, like, like you're following me every day, watching eight hours a day. I'm talking about yep. this thing. I'm not even asking you for the $10 raffle ticket to go into my thing. You could just share it on your Facebook. 99% of the people watching this every fucking morning have not even shared allinchallenge.com. Right. Like, because people don't get that they're in control. People talk shit, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. but I want to give back, but I don't have the resources. Sure you do. You have 14 followers <laughs> on Twitter. That's called resources. You have 11, you have 113 you know, uh, contacts in your cell phone, you can literally say, have you checked out this all in challenge? You should buy a $10 raffle ticket. Every yeah. fucking person here could do that and feed somebody that's hungry for all the fucking hundreds of emails I'm getting every day of, I wish I could, I wish I could be giving back right now. You can, it's not just money. It's awareness. It's yeah. there's a million, th you know, like I don't get it. You could go down that list of the, all of the challenges and just find one and say, Hey, that this challenge, uh, my friend or cousin. Here's or one. Here's one. Here's one. Every single person here, if you can go to the Instagram profile and the Twitter of your favorite celebrity, an athlete, and just say, "Hey, you should join the All In Challenge," like James Harden might see that. Yeah, you're in control. My vote doesn't count. I don't have it. Like everybody can make anything happen. Yeah, this is an incredible. It's called the internet. <laughs> I, I, accountability is the greatest drug in the world. Absolutely. And that's, I, I'm hoping that that will reign true. And when I finish this book and I don't know, hopefully another couple of weeks I'll have it done and I can start editing and get it done. I will and Jeremy, when you, when you, the best, the best way to sell a book and be successful in that is to give away free content ab about the subject matter every day, yep. 24 hours a day. So, and it's funny, I, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things I did is I think, a, I don't know, maybe six months ago, you started talking about uh, TikTok. And I, at the time, I, I took exactly the um, the attitude that you said we all would, which was, all right, that's for, you know, teenage kids. I, I'm, you know, I'm 48. This I'm not going to get on TikTok. There's no way. Um, so, but then it, I remember at one point, it was probably around Christmas time, you had said, hey, just get on it and watch it, spend a couple weeks, a month, two months, whatever, and just watch and just keep scrolling and just what, and so I did that and I was like, holy crap, you know, aside from all the dance, you know, videos or whatever, there's, there are a ton of people, especially older people. Uh, my favorite is all the parents in their forties that are on it specifically to ruin it for their kids. hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah. And I think, Probably last week, I just started, you know, I'd go out for a run and I'd get done and I'd have a thought in my head about something. I just put the camera on and just roll with it and then throw it up on TikTok and just just to do it. And, you know, I was very hesitant at first because it's a self-esteem thing. You know, I'm putting myself out there. The exposure is what scares the crap out of me and I'm sure everyone else. So but I just did it and I started doing it. And I think that this is an excellent platform where I can you know, 60 seconds, you know, don't have to worry about it. I mean, I have Final Cut Pro and I edit stuff and I'm like, I don't even need to do that. Just throw it on there. Forget about everything else. Make it. I'm proud yeah. of you, Jeremy. I like where you're headed. Keep going. Um, hey, so please. the last thing was regarding my question was um, on ad spend. So I, when my first book came out, I did a bunch of ads on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and I'm trying to figure out LinkedIn and get that right. Um, what I noticed though, and after talking to my publisher, is that there's a 90 day lag between the purchase and sales data coming out. Like, so if somebody bought the book today, it'd be three months before I'd know that sale occurred. The Amazon so, rank moves by the second. Your publisher's okay. thinking old school. You can see the Amazon rank change by the second. 
Oh, I didn't know. I got to make a note of that. Yeah, if you look at your Amazon rank on your book rankings, you can get an indicator. It updates every hour on how your ad spend's doing. Okay. That's your answer. That I didn't know. That, that'll be good to know. Um, I did notice that when it first got put on Amazon in January, there was they had one copy in stock, which the publisher told me that's that's how it's going to be until it starts to sell. Now I think they're up to eleven or twelve in stock, which that's something. So it's better cool. than zero. Absolutely. <laughs> run the ads, run content towards it, link all your social media accounts to the Amazon URL, all your default links in all your profiles. Okay. Make make. 10, 15 pieces of content a day and look at the Amazon rank every hour. There's your tactic. I love you, man. I love you back. See ya. Thank you. You know, it's, it's funny. A couple things there to recap that call. One, as you saw in the last 18 seconds of that call, I can go tactics all day long. I spend 99% of my time on um, macro because fixing the sink is not interesting if you don't have the well fixed right? You can Google what I just said to him as like, how do you see if your ad spend is doing well on Amazon? Um, it's the same thing with the people that are mad at me in the comments right now for interrupting. It's it's my style. Like I, I get what he's saying and I'm trying to move to the point and I'm trying to bring value to everybody. I understand what he's saying. The reason all the callers are so happy is they know that I understand what they're saying. I understand it might not be the best style. It might not be the, you know, the kindest or it might come off like I'm a douche or only want to hear myself speak. I understand everything you're saying. I promise you 100% of the fucking energy and focus is on value. We have an hour trying to get through and get as much as possible. The caller might not be upset. You might have not processed it, but I have. You're also more than welcome to do your own show. Plus, there's unlimited content of podcasters and interviewers who let people finish their entire thoughts. And you can watch that unlimited. They're, everyone's got their own style, and the value comes if you really look second layer. Let's keep it going. Hey, Mackenzie. Hi, Gary. How are you? Um, I'm nervous, but I'm good. Don't I'm be. really happy to be here. I'm happy to be with you. And, and I'm thanking you so much for doing this. I, I just appreciate it so much. Just saw your videos like three years ago and just watch them almost every day. So thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Um, so just to kind of start off, um, I'm from Portland, Oregon, uh, near Chris, actually, only about nice. an hour from him. Um, nice. and, uh, I'm 21. Basically, I work at a job that is okay, but I don't want to do it forever. Um, so recently, I decided to launch a, uh, well, working on launching a uh, meal prep business. And uh, I love like Latin culture, gets me really mm. fired up. Always like trying to learn Spanish, like been trying to learn for a while. My boyfriend, he's Mexican, well, Mexican American, um, but uh, something I really enjoy. So we decided to start a uh, Mexican inspired meal prep company. Okay. Now, um, so the meals are healthy. Uh, so it's kind of like geared towards people that have trouble losing weight um, because they don't want to eat dry chicken breast and broccoli. Um, so basically, I'm having trouble with social media because one, I'm not a trainer. And two, I'm not a nutritionist. So I need to know, like, how do I provide value without stepping out of my lane? opinions and inf and information that you know. You know, people, you know, when I got huge in the wine world, everyone's like, oh, are you a sommelier? I'm like, no, I worked in a wine store and, you know, didn't have to work in a restaurant and get a sommelier certificate. I learned in the streets, you know, just because you're not a trait, don't put trainers and nutritionists on a pedestal. Yes, those professions, certifications can give them potential surface level clout to be able to talk about it. The reason you can talk about it is because you're Mackenzie and you're a human. And you have an opinion on what fucking corn and salsa and, and fucking meat and chicken and fucking, you have an opinion. That's why. Right. Don't okay. underestimate your opinion. You don't need to be an expert. Okay. I promise you right now, I don't have a psychology degree. I'm willing to go up against people that have them because I have natural okay. talent. Right. I didn't go to business school. To You understand? Yeah. You know, you're at a young age where the structure puts certificates and, and process on a pedestal. People put process or checking the box on a pedestal versus real life. You have passion for Latin culture. That's already giving you permission. Right. You genuinely like it. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, you're having trouble. You're having quick. you're having trouble on social media because you have the insecurity of not thinking you're the part, which then stops you from making. Hundred percent. I know. <laughs> um, and then so I real quick, not to not not to get the second part. So like, let's put a nail in this coffin. Like, yes, you have permission. I'm giving it to you. You here's your certificate. Okay. It's a fucking Gary okay. Vee certificate. <laughs> You can fucking okay. post your fucking opinions about Latin food. Okay. Um, so that was kind of like, yeah, obviously I have an insecurity, but that was the excuse on what to make. And then sh should I just like, I don't even know, like just posting, like, cause I don't want to be like, there's like a lot of like companies in my area and all they do is they just post, post, like, or put your orders in, put your orders in. They're not really like providing value. Um, so should I just like, kind of like post, like, I don't know have if you ever, I want to do you, like, Have you ever, have you ever read Jab, 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 Right Hook? No. Okay. Give Dustin but I've heard your, a lot of it. Okay. Give Dustin your, um, address. You know, once okay. you come off here, he'll grab you. We'll get your address and I'm going to send you a copy. Okay. Thank you. It's a, it, but to, to help everybody who's not going to get a copy, give value, give value, give that value, ask for business. Jab, 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 right hook. You know, you know. Talk about you. Talk about you and your boyfriend. Talk about your favorite things. Show a nice picture. Make a funny video, and then ask. But I'm telling you right now, TikTok. I'm telling you right now, TikTok. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Mackenzie. Take care. Bye. Yep. It's an interesting show. The lack of beard is giving me some interesting energy here. Dustin, I'm feeling kind of like sharp. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Um, just the lack of beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Keep it moving. Tanner, what's good? Can't hear you. All right. Tanner? Mm -mm. Can't hear you. See what's going on. I'm on TikTok. I'll, 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 Creeper, what's good? Tan, you good? Yep, you can go to the next one. Thank you. Stun, what's good? Ryan Harmon, what's good? Freestyles, Nick Waller, what's good? Good morning, Derek Brad. Jennifer Dalton, appreciate you this morning. John Hollywood. Hi. Holy shit. Can you hear me? I can. What's your name? Rye. Rye. It's Mariah, it's but I go by. Yeah. I, I um, like may I do a shameless plug first? Sure. <laughs> um, so... If I could, could I have a follow back on Instagram? Mm -hmm. It's what? at, I have like a stage name type thing. It's at Letty Lotage, L-E-T-T-I-E-L-O-T-O-J. -T -T -E yep. I know that sounds like a porn star name, but it's like a mixture of my parents' names. So. And I'm doing this thing right Got now you. for COVID. And Thank you. you. You're welcome, oh my God. My life just was made. I'm doing this um, thing that I wanted to ask you to donate to and kind of put it out there to the, the fans that are your fans. I don't know why I'm not talking like a human being. Um, so I'm going to go out in the community and help the homeless, like the female population with um, items for like their menstrual cycle. So me and my mom like lived in my car last year and I've been homeless at other points in my early life. And it fucking sucked to be on your period and not have a change of clothes and not have a shower. And it's embarrassing and humiliating when you, you know, like mess up your clothes. So I was like, well, that felt like shit. So I'm going to, you know, um, like I put some money aside because right now I have my stimulus check and that's really like all me and my mom have. But I was like, well, I want to give back to the people that donate. So I decided that I'm going to give them a $10 gift card to whatever their store or restaurant of choice is as like an incentive to donate. Um, but I'm taking tampons, preferably variety packs, so it can help people with different like needs and situations, and then pads, cleansing wipes or baby wipes, and then um, like over-the-counter pain medicine, so like Midol or Tylenol. And you can just DM me for that if you want, and I'll give you the address to send items. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm sending you a DM right now with my. Actually, can you e actually? I'll just email it to you. Oh, I see. You hit me up a bunch on DM. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I just oh, DM'd, I just DM'd you my email. I, uh, I've got several, I'm an early investor in mm -hmm. a, uh, in a tampon company, direct to consumer, and I'm going to hit them up. Oh, wow. I want to see where they're at. I might be able to help you. So send me an email. Okay. 
I don't know how many ten dollar gift cards I can afford. Um, not, not, <laughs> that not, would be not, great. Not, not many, and so I'd like you to keep it and actually use it as a base for you to get. You know, tough to be selfless without first being selfish. I'd rather use use that stimulus check to actually create a, the base of a stability situation for you, yeah. and and I will come in and help you with what you're trying to. Uh, do from a good place because I can. Yeah. And so we'll do that instead. You keep your check and start figuring out how to build a world that doesn't put you back into a car. I'll come in and help you and, and we'll get some pads and tampons to the people that need it. That's so sick, dude. Thank you. And I'm sorry I look like an entire whole grown ass man right now. You, but you, don't. Um... you look you look like an <laughs> amazingly beautiful woman with a very nice heart. Dustin, let's throw up her uh, Instagram. I have a funny feeling that we can get um, a lot of people to help out here. It's L-E-T-T-I-E-L-O-T-O-J. L-E-T-T-I-E-L-O-T-O-J. Slower, Get faster, bro. Come on, fuck you, Dustin. L-E-T-T-I-E-L-O-T-O-J. Here you go, Dustin. L-E-T-T-I-E. There we go. I got it. I got you, I got you. Vayner Nation, let's step up, hit up this lovely lady, DM her. And I just wanted love. to thank, I'm sorry to cut you off. I just wanted okay. to thank you for like recognizing my question because I tried, as you can see in DM, like several times. So the fact that you have millions of options and you picked me is like huge. I've been watching you for six years and I've wanted this from like day one. So well, we're here. This is sick as fuck. Agreed. Uh, I'll be in touch. Okay. Send me an email, for sure. Send me an email right now. Okay, put, can I put a, can I ask my question? Yes, of course. I apologize. Go ahead. No, no, you're fine. I was like, oh my god. So I make um, content basically documenting my daily life. With um, I struggled with depression since I was 16, and that's the main reason I started the channel. So I basically was like, well, there have been times where I wanted to, you know, harm myself yep. or like had really dark thoughts, and just the thought of somebody else primarily kids. I was hearing a lot about people that were like 15, 16, struggling with this when they should be worried about you know, getting their braces off and passing driver's ed. They're like, do I want to be here? And I'm like, that's fucked up. So I was like, well, you know, it felt like shit. So I'm gonna, um, it was really nerve wracking to be that transparent, you know, because there's such a stigma surrounding mental health. Um, but I just documented, like, if I had an episode, I took my meds on camera. Cause I was like, I didn't turn into a fucking dragon. Like there's so much stigma around even medication. Um, and I documented like I had a run with, you know, addiction and stuff like that for, for um, the month of April. I document my, my experiences with sexual assault. Basically, my question is like, I'm worried that, you know, because I want to do this for a living. And that means that I have to have at least a certain amount of income. And I'm nervous that when people of influence see my page, they're going to see me as a liability because sometimes I think I'm being too transparent. You're going too general. No, you're going, you're going too general. Like, you know. That makes sense to me. You're right. Eighty percent, eighty percent will, and mm -hmm. the twenty and the twenty percent that you need to be connected with anyway won't. See, people always don't act themselves because they're worried about some other force, college, a boss, right. the professional industry accepting them. What they don't realize is they are there. Then that means they want to be accepted by an establishment by being them fake selves. Mm -hmm. Riot, do you know how many people, literally the entire speaking industry in 2009, like every speaking agent, every you know agency, every conference, literally communicated to me via email, phone call, face to face. You, wow. will, you have so much talent to be a great speaker, you will never be a big speaker because you curse too much. Don't curse and you can be a great speaker. Yeah, I heard that shit too. Look, look at these people. Look at these people. Look at these people. Look at these people. You know what's happened over the last 10 years between me and those 10 people? I fucking lapped them. I fucking lapped them. For sure, yeah. You know why? Because I didn't waver. I didn't want to be accepted by an establishment that I didn't respect anyway. Why the fuck mm -hmm. do you want to pander to people that you don't respect anyway? Oh my God. And like the, the other thing that I realized is I was off for five months. They got me for five months because my family was like, you know, law enforcement looks at that, um, potential employers. And I wasn't, I was, you know, consequently having a, right. um, a hard Just, time right, finding a job. Listen to me. Judge the judges. Okay. Pay attention to who's giving you that advice. 
Yeah. You I mean, there will be nine to fives and I want to be a public speaker, you know, like Kobe didn't want Shaq stats. Like if you don't want their numbers or their lifestyle, then don't. The only, them. the only thing that you need to layer with that is figuring, is figuring out what you need to do mentally and operationally and, and say, and practically mm -hmm. of not putting yourself back in a vulnerable spot of like being in a car, right? Like for example, you're right. a sweetheart but I can't take, I can't have you taking your stimulus check and spending it on giving when you don't have. I'm being serious. Yeah, I'm horrible with, with money, but no, I'm serious. You're yeah. fucking super horrible with money. Yeah, like it goes worst. back to what I said earlier. Like you could share the all in challenge and keep the money and like, and start building to stability. Yeah, your relationship well, the reason with I wanted to do garbage. that was because the reason I wanted to do that was because like one of my tactics for helping to combat my depression is like getting the focus off of myself. I and I always that. journal about it, but I wanted to do something tangible. I, I respect that, but you need to figure out a different relationship that doesn't require the fact that it puts you in a vulnerable spot. Because once you go back to that vulnerable spot, you're back to fuck. You know what happens? Yeah, right, for sure. You know, you know. Ex I don't have to tell you. You know exactly what's gonna fucking happen when you go back into a fucking car in October. You're fucking off. You're fucking. You. It's very right. hard to do shit if your legs aren't underneath you. Mm -hmm. You're not helping anybody. Right. I need you to get practical about that. For sure. I will definitely. Um, one last thing. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be selfish. This is just like, I don't know if I'll get this chance again, but um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but like I was really wanting to ask for a job okay? Um, because like the stimulus money is what all we have right now. And my mom bent over backwards my entire childhood. She was a single so mom. Like I'll, I'll explain this. Right. If you can, if you can make content, then I can give you a shot. If, if you can't, I don't want to bullshit you. I'm like, Going right. through the process of letting jobs go, and I don't want to sit here and bullshit you. But if mm -hmm. you are able to design or video edit, you know, then you can absolutely take that email and give me and show me what you can do, and then I can put you in touch with my team. Yeah, and after COVID, man, I'll do it for free. Like I'll walk to New York and sleep in a fucking tree. Like <laughs> I've slept in the cars, so but like, send, yeah. Send, send me the emails. We'll talk, okay? For sure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're you're welcome, Ryan. Let's keep it going. Tanner, fuck. And this was meant to be such a good talk. You got the epic rug behind you. I got the fucking classic curtains. This was going to be fucking dynamite. Can you hear me? Sorry, Dust. Let's keep it moving. All right, let's see who else. Crystal, thank you so much for being in here. Tad, Ballard, what's good? Jenny R, love you back. Carolyn, what's good? Pat. Gary, can you hear me? I can I can hear you and I can see an incredible nerd center behind you. I'm fucking impressed. Dude, it is. It's a passion project of mine, and I'll. Uh, That's awesome. You, you kind of like kicked my ass and started like I'm starting a YouTube channel on superheroes. So. And TikTok, bro. TikTok. Dude, I uploaded my first TikTok and get like six hundred thousand views. It's on. It's insane. Yeah. No, and I yeah, kept. You know, I kept uploading. Yeah. No, and I'm three. three I'm trying to get three a day in. I'm trying, but here's a quick question on that. Like, does it have to be superhero related or can I get my, okay. No, dude. Look yeah. at, you know, people ask me questions. You know how I always say, watch what I do, not what I say. Yeah. Some, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's business. Sometimes it's garage sales. Sometimes it's a Jets photo. Sometimes yeah. it's a throwback to when I was a kid. My report card, a keynote. Sure. To some kid in the fucking street, a cartoon. Like the answer is yes. Yeah, of course. O always so yes. I know it is, and it's so weird. I like thought about so many questions to ask, and I'm like, oh well, he answered that already. Oh well, he answered that already. It's it's awesome. Thank you, first of all. The question um, becomes: This is what this is all about. The question becomes: You all know that I've been so consistent. I've yeah. been so historically correct. Like yeah. this is this is take me. Out, I'm taking myself out of the question. I've been right so long about yeah. things that are proven in history. Like at this point, you know the tactics are right. The reason you're not doing it is this which is why I've switched. Four years ago, I started talking more about this. Before, sure. it used to be tactics. But then when people weren't doing it, when they know the fucking answer, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, right. Self-confidence, self-doubt, parenting. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what evolved me because I don't understand why you fuckers aren't. How the fuck are you watching this right now and not posting three times a day on TikTok? And you know what's crazy? Out of the 10,000 people, 99% are not, Pat. Yeah. 99%. Yeah. Dude, you, you're, I love it, man. You're so fired up and you make me fired up. And I'm sure the rest of my town is sick of hearing me talk about Gary Vee. Because, <laughs> um, fucking up the town. 
Right. Yeah. So I'm, that's like ultimately my goal. And even before I started listening to you, that was it. Like I wanted to be the Gary V of Peoria, where I'm from, Peoria, Illinois. And uh, so I'm 27. I used my skills as a videographer to build a company and I'm a freelance. I've been doing it for about nine years. And so I guess my question would be like, do I, you know, I know that's going to make me a great money. I love doing it. It's a great career. And now I want to dabble in some other things because my entrepreneurial spirit, right? And do I grind at the video for like three more years before dabbling? Well, I know I can dabble, but like, should I double down before I invest in other stuff? For instance, um, right now well, with- The oh, answer's always yes. You can yeah. double down on video and dabble. Yeah, yeah. Pat, I want to know your 24 hours and I want to know your seven days a week. I want right. to know. I want to, I want to literally sit on your shoulder and be like, <laughs> bro, you just watched an hour and a half of fucking random videos. Dude, that before, could have been double down time. Before bro, I listened to you, I was, listening, I was watching four hours of Netflix a day, like kind of shit. So I was like, dude, I had time. So like, okay, I guess, um, cause I really want to gain value from this and I know everyone watching, that's why you do this. So like right now with, um, scenario okay. going on, yes. A lot of people ask me to do sweat equity and I'm, I'm cool with that if I can get a percentage of the business, right? Like, have you dealt with that a lot? Like, is that, of course, how do I, I go? How do I not? Say yes. You say, you say yes or no. Okay. Yeah. I cause I, like, yesterday who offered me a big, these are now big companies who said, yeah. Hey, our cash flow's fucked up. We want Vayner to do this work, but we'll share the profits on the back end." And I said, no, yeah. that's how I dealt with it. Gotcha. <laughs> and then somebody else came in and said, hey, we know this is normally $3 million. Would you do it for one nine? I was like, there's something there. I'm like, yes. Yeah, sure. So should there always be something a little upfront before I like put in all my... Like... I, I do unlimited stuff for free. Yeah. And I, and I is, believe... Pat, this is free. Yeah, I know. Dude, this is so sick, man. I've been doing so, this uh, in my town. Like, you know, I just like get people that I see that have the drive and I FaceTime them and just start kicking their ass with, with these things about like document instead of create, you know? Listen to me, listen yeah. to me. The answer is you're hundred percent in control. Everybody thinks they're getting gotten. Yeah, 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 that's true. You see like, oh fuck, this guy's a better businessman than me. He's tricking me. He's, he's taking advantage of me during this downtime. No, he's not. He's negotiating. When you say no and walk away, he then yeah. finds another video person, yeah. or if he desperately wants you, you're in control. This is a perfect end to the start. Yeah. You're. You, yeah. How do you handle it? You're in control. Mm -hmm. It's called negotiating. It's called business. Okay. Everybody's okay. trying to tell, like people, like, so many people are not cut out for business or haven't calibrated oh. business yet. Gary, they're fucking trying to get me. No, they're not. You don't have to say yes. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. No, but really, Pat, it's like so fucking right. Like, 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 you're not getting hosed. You're making a decision. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel it's not superhero shit. They're not like some evil villain that transformed your brain, and you're like, yes, Megatron. Sorry. You know, like you're fucking, you're in fucking control. Yeah, dude, that's so true, man. It's so true. The problem is a lot of people whose time and efforts are not that valuable want it to be. They're actually the wrong party. They're using ego. They mm -hmm. want the other person to succumb to them. When that yeah. other pro people are like, Gary, you need to, I'm like, I don't need to do shit. I have 40,000 videographers lined up in my fucking DM right now, willing to work for free for four years so that they yeah. can be like Babin and D-Rock. Look what's happened to Dustin. Dustin literally, literally yeah. riding BMX bikes and all of a sudden can fucking produce any fucking podcast or video show in the world. That's what's up, yeah. For sure. I know what my value is and, and, and other people do as well. Maybe that, maybe that, you know how many people passed on free work because they know their worth, yet that was the video that was gonna change their entire career? So the fucking audacity when nobody gives a fuck about you is insane to me. People yeah. fucking walking around like they're Pablo Picasso and fucking Steven Spielberg when there's fucking 80,000 of them. All you fuckers grew up with fucking Final Cut and fucking iMovie and YouTube. You're fucking commoditized. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Gary, I, um, I'm going to watch this a thousand times and just like relive it. But the one thing I, I will say, like when I'm showing people your stuff, I always start with the Hot Ones episode. <laughs> okay, because that was the first thing I saw, and it's like, is that you know, true? 
That was the first well, time. Yeah, was the first thing I saw. And, and it was so only let's a- break it down. First time you see it, and you're like, give, go through the whole thing. And you're like, who's this guy? Like, yes, he- everyone <laughs> looked at me on the couch. Like, you don't know this guy. Like, we feel like this is your life right now. And I'm like, no, I've never heard of this guy. So it was a p- perfect mixture of comedy, right? And not so like. Cause I have some friends that are like, Oh, I don't listen to Gary. He told some high schooler to drop out. I'm like, you saw one clip from out of context. You know what I mean? So like, I will go like, um, I've shared that hot ones probably like 10 times showed my parents showed, you know, cause my parents are hustlers. Like I'm like, mom, you're 65. Like she's killing garage sales her whole life. They started yeah. card shows when they were younger. Like it's just, Love. it's just insane, man. Brother, I really appreciate having you on. Thank you, have, you, man. You have such you have such a good spirit. Like, <laughs> I, like I want to be your friend. Like I think you're gonna get DMs with your handle here. It's Pat Clark. Like I think you're literally gonna get like, hey, let's be friends. Dude, that'd be awesome, man. Hey, so, uh, and by the way, yeah. on on the final point, all the shit in your background, like, bro, you need to lean into putting out content around superheroes on TikTok at scale. Yeah, I'm I telling do, you, I I'm telling you. Play. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You do what? I do cosplay, so I dress up and do unboxings. Of I get comics. it talk shows i get yeah. it i know that whole scene bro i'm telling you if you go yeah. hard at tiktok hard mm-hmm. three posts a day just feeling your kindness like youthful energy like i'm telling you you're gonna find yourself at comic con in a way that you could have never dreamed and you're gonna dm me and be like gary v you're i i loved you at first and now i fucking i really fucking love you i can't wait for that moment man um hey quick uh you know i don't read books but i am jabbing here left and right right so I want to be a public speaker and stuff anyway. Like I know with events and stuff being canceled for a while, uh, you see like online speaking becoming a big thing. And like, I would love to apply or apply for Vayner speakers or something like that. Vayner speakers, you have no shot. I'll tell you why. Cause, cause Steve and, and Zach who make the decisions, they're impossible. Like I'm like recommending like people that have huge speaking careers are like, not right. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm like scared of the Vayner speakers crew. But, um, but, but, That's cool, but, no, man. but you should do what I did. You should yeah. speak for free for a long time until you don't. Yeah. And you know, I was going to schools and volunteering, but not documenting any of it. So like, I'm good, dude, like literally changed my world. So I appreciate it. Let's get someone else on here. Have a good one, man. Love you, man. See you soon. Yeah, I appreciate one. you saying that, Josh. Um, great show today. I, 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 I'm glad it's free too, man. I really hope everybody enjoyed this show. Like, I like somebody said a comment, no beard, no bullshit. Today was a very focused fucking show. Like, we got a lot in there, Dustin, in this hour. Like, yeah. Got a good amount in there. What was your takeaways? Anything? Um, I wrote notes because things always are flying all over the place for me. <laughs> um, I I always like those parts where it's in between the calls, like um, when you're talking about the whole interrupting and giving, like you wanted to give value to people. Like, what's your, what's your take on the interrupting thing, right? Because you know, and you see, like especially because we've been doing like coffee and commerce, and we've been doing tea with Gary Vee, and like people really, really get mad at me and I really understand because I think they're right. I get it on the other side of it. Yeah. I, I can see, I can see the perception of it and the feeling, but like, but it makes so much sense to me. Like point taken, let's get more value out of it. I understand on the other end, there's a whole audience that didn't get the point. So that's why they want it. They didn't, they're not fast enough or intuitive enough or to actually see it. So I'm fucking that up. And so I'm trying to find my balance. Like, it's a really interesting, like, like, look, I don't think I'm the greatest interviewer. You know, I'm not fucking Larry King. I get that. But I, but I like it because I feel like everybody else does the other style and you can get that. There's a trillion fucking, you know, videos on, on YouTube where you can get that. I don't know. What do you think about it? Um, I, I mean, I think it's just like all ass kissing aside, your brain is going faster than a lot of uh, everyone else. So it's like, you already are like a step ahead than like me. <laughs> so I, you like already know what I'm going to say. So I get it. Like you're, that's why you're kind of getting to the point already. But um, it's a fine line because I also understand the other side. Yeah. You know, you have to do it for your audience. And if I get it, but they don't, I have to let that right. breathe. Yeah. It's a tricky fucking game. But yeah, that's very true. It, it's why I don't think I'll ever be the best at interviewing, but I also think like, you know, like, I get these emails, like literally I was reading comments. Somebody was mad at me yesterday for the sh- Shopify 
um, CEO, but then also DM me like that he follows the Shopify CEO and he got more out of our interview thoughts and, and information from him yeah. than he has in any of the fucking hundred articles and videos that he's watched. And and that makes me lean into the, you know, interrupting, I don't even call it that, it's my interview style that is desperately, desperately trying to bring value to the audience. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, you understand people, you know what they're, they want to know and you're just kind of like jumping to it. I also, I also know what the interviewer or the person that's asking me the question is actually trying to get off the interviewee and I don't want them to, mm -hmm. I want them to get to the real thing. Interesting. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, no, like, no I'm totally you know, when I, you know, I'm putting pressure on the interviewee. Like, you know, all these incredible guests are just like, everyone's like, Gary gets all these incredible guests and then fucking doesn't let them talk. Mm -mm. I don't let them to do their press release that right, they do everywhere right. else. I'm trying to fucking help you. And you're fucking drilling me in the comments, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, Winetext.com. Today, uh, if you don't drink Brunello, you're making a huge mistake. One of the best wines out of Tuscany in the world. Um, today's offer is half price Thursday. Uh, it is finally time to step up and sign up for this if you drink wine. I, I can't wrap my head around. I can't wrap my head around why you haven't signed up. Please sign up. And then obviously, please, all in challenge, please go tweet at, leave a comment in the Instagram comments of your favorite celebrities. Um, please, please, please figure out how to get more people aware of the All In Challenge, allinchallenge.com. Um, let's get that up. Uh, let's get a new graphic uh, starting tomorrow, Dustin, because this just says All In Challenge. Let's get the allinchallenge.com part. I see that you do that. I see what you're doing. Got it. You always support it with the URL below. Got but, it. Uh, yeah, I'll get the uh, full Understood. version. Yep. Yeah, let's do that. Um, please support the All In Challenge. We're raising, I think we're over 25, 20, we're at about 25 million. Where are we at? All In Challenge. We are at... We are at $25 million raised in two weeks. It would mean a lot to me if you supported it. And if you want to give a $10 donation to the All-In Challenge to Feed the Hungry during this terrible time, uh, please check out my auction uh, on All-In Challenge, uh, GaryB.com slash All-In Challenge. Here's what I'm giving away. I am giving away the ultimate Gary V experience. How should that go? Okay. Over the last week or so, I've been uh, jamming with my friend Michael Rubin and helping out on this All In Challenge that I am accepting right now. But allinchallenge.com, please go there. We are challenging some of the greatest artists, entertainers, athletes in the world to provide a ridiculous all-time experience or one of their most iconic items in their collection to help raise money to help feed the hungry during this ridiculous time. And so now I have to put up my auction. So my auction, the ultimate Gary Vee experience. Here we go, I'm gonna go off the top of the head. And you can go on all, uh, allinchallenge.com to go bid on this. I am giving away, okay. You get to, in the course of a year, you will go garage sailing with me and film uh, Trash Talk. Also, you're gonna get a workout with me and Mike Vacanti. So I know a lot of you pay attention to that part of my world. Also, we're gonna go to Wine Library and do a $25,000 uh, shopping spree. That's right, I'm gonna pay my dad. <laughs> well, I'm gonna donate, we're gonna pay my dad 25000 So $25,000 shopping spree at Wine Library. I will walk through the whole store with you, tell you the war stories, and you'll buy a bunch of uh, wine, beer, liquor, whatever you want, food. We are going to go to a Jets game together. You're gonna tailgate with me. I never do this. When I give away Jets tickets, I never let the person sit with me. So you will sit with me during the Jets game. I won't talk to you during the game. I'm completely focused, but you'll get that. So the ultimate Jets experience, tailgate, full game with me as well. Also, I'm going to give you one week play at Vayner Media. So this is for you and a plus one, by the way. So the two tickets, the for, we'll do some plus ones, we'll do some just me and you, depending on what it is. One full week at VaynerMedia, getting consulting and business advice from Team Gary B and me for the entire week, hanging out in the pit where the show's done. Uh, you're gonna be a guest of my podcast. We're going to do a wine dinner for you and seven of your friends uh, at Hunt and Fish Club uh, in New York City. And I'm gonna fly you, uh, all paid, plus one, to three of my keynotes and we'll work on those details. The ultimate Gary V experience. I hope you bid on it. I hope you get involved. I hope we raise a lot of money to help people that need it. Also, what's so fun about the All In Challenge is you get to challenge people to be in it. I am gonna challenge all the Vayner Sports athletes. I expect you in there, so that is number one. Number two, I'm gonna go with, ooh, you know what? Timbaland, the super producer who's completely lighting up uh, Instagram. Timbaland, the super producer, I'm calling you out. 
And finally, I got one. The Undertaker, one of the great wrestlers of all time. Please join the challenge. Everybody go to allinchallenge.com. Please support this. The experiences are gonna be nuts. We've been working, bleeding out of the eyeballs for the last week, putting this all together. You're gonna be blown away what you're about to see on social media. Hashtag all in challenge. Please check it out and please go to your favorite celebrities, athletes, and entertainers and leave hashtag all in challenge to get them involved. The all in challenge. Please take it.